say hi on the mountain and down in the canyon below it shines like the crown of an angel we got to North Carolina first stop Marion North Carolina for the liver mush festival so we got our number here and I asked him if they cook this liver mush like my mama and he says your mom a good cook I said, yes, she was. So it ain't something you cook fast because you got to get that outside nice and crispy, soft in the middle. Got some bodad wrapped around that. Ah, yes, indeed. So we're getting ours from these folks right here, Mama Jay's, rolling snack shack. Bluegrass band is playing. Hickory's looking at his fancy liver mush. Slow hikes looking at his. We got a little uh, some grits and some jalapeno and some liver mush and some Texas toast here in North Carolina. Woo! -hoo! We waited about an hour for this, but that's fried right. Mm. Oh yeah, they did. It is cooked right. Yeah. Like people are in a rush, you can't rush liver mush. It's got to be. Well done on the outside, soft in the middle. Yeah, even you said that, right? Cook right? Do it. Woo! Goodness gracious, that's good eating. Mm -hmm. So we're driving on up to the gorge right now. Hicker's driving. Hi, I'm driving. To that liver mush dish, which oh, had... Oh, Lord. Oh, man, was it good. That's why they were... Yeah, the, so, the grits were really the grits, creamy. Grits you could eat with a, with a, uh, a knife. Yeah, they weren't, they weren't hard but they weren't runny, and we stood there an hour waiting for that, and I tell you, it was an hour well spent. Well, hello. The Hickory and Slow Hiker up there chatting, and I'm having myself a cup of uh, Medaglia Doro Instant Espresso. Slept in, because I got up at uh, 2.57 a.m. yesterday to get to the airport, catch my flight, fly to Charlotte, have an hour and a half layover and fly up to Asheville, North Carolina. Hickory picked me up. We drove up here. We secured this uh, site at the top of Keesler Memorial Highway in the Linville Gorge, North Carolina. And then, this is just to kind of, you know, put our tarp up, put a few things out, and then drove back down to Marion, North Carolina, which is, uh, you know, 30 minutes from here to go to the Liver Mush Festival. And that Liver Mush put me to sleep. I mean, it's like 8.30 in the morning. I haven't slept in this late, even at home, in a long time. It's fantastic. Uh, eventually, we're going to load our packs and get down into the gorge, but right now, my stuff is scattered willy-nilly in my suitcase with, where I you know, have my pack and everything, so we've got it some rebooting to do. Mm -hmm. There's Slow Hikes Hammock Rig. Now, he's got a whole different way. He likes to lay straight end is that way he puts himself a spreader bar in has a way that he rigs that up this is his own design he's always used has a pocket up here with hydration tube so do your own thing way out on that old limbo mountain with a bear in the catamount rain there's a strange ghost light can be seen every night. No scientist or hunter can explain. I say hi. This is where we stop. There should be 18 in here. That's what I've been getting. One, two, three, four, five, individually? six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh man! Let's see, help it. Look at that. And then you, think, you know, you take these little rubber band, take the little band off, and put them in that little individual bag, and then you got a little uh, ooh, left <laughs> a turd in there. <laughs> little uh, two little hands full of goodness. Ta da! On Broadway. Well, we're uh -huh. the boys of the chorus. We hope you like the show. <laughs> we know you're rooting for us, but now we've got to go. The 
get that lid on. Foggy Ooh, lid. Fogged them right up. Foggy froggy. Froggy fog. Time to flip them. Put them right in the butt. Oh, yeah. Hey. Little hoppers. Little hoppers. Look at that. Did little, that happen naturally? Yes, it's a little happy plate. What's the deal with you saving these rubber bands there's here? A, there's a little or girl. Is that calamari? No, it's a girl in the neighborhood. I save them for her braces. She puts them in a brace and saves her nose. <laughs> you know that's true, right? <laughs> so tender. my new backpack right there called a suitcase rebooted today got the ULA ohm slow hike over here just got himself a uh, used barely Bar yeah it looks brand new ULA catalyst which owning that pack got me uh, knowing how to spell the word Catalyst. <laughs> so like everything in life these days, everybody's got to overcomplicate and give you too many choices. And even the wonderful Duke's Mayonnaise Company has done that with your um, bold and creamy bacon and tomato mayonnaise. Now I've already had a little taste of this. And my initial impression is you taste the bacon first. I would not want this on a tomato sandwich on white bread. I would want straight up Duke's. Because the tomato to me is just singing the high harmony to that glob of dukes but the color is uh is interesting i think it's a standalone i don't know what you would spread that on unless you add it to a some just a hot dog bun bacon and tomato a potato, sandwich. A potato bun kind of tastes it tastes like a a blt it's maybe been sitting a while and it's a little cold and still good and we're just gnawing away here, just going, mm, ah, uh, ah. Uh. If you're never eating a frog leg, you need to get a uh, old hickory to cook them for you, because, man. Mm. Mm. That. Delicious. Man, they're just mm. falling off the bone. Mm. I don't think they taste like chicken. He puts an old bay and a spice that Jason Henderson sent us. Thanks, Jason. Hey, man. No, that's your Everglades seasoning, which seems apropos for frog leg. My opinion is they're between chicken and catfish. That may be why this parking lot is empty and it's just me and Hickory in this parking lot. All right, we're up here at the top of Pension Trail. Me and my brother Kent, and better known as Hickory. And yeah, come on down. Well, we get down here, we get our first heartbreak. Somebody left a chair. I guess that was just too much to ask to bring it back up. 15, 20 minutes. Mm -mm -mm. We're going to have to tote that out of here, aren't we? I'm going to cut it up and make some wind chimes. Plastic threads on it so you can't really put it in a fire. Yeah, you long bottling. You pulled that out of a trash can. Yeah, it worked. Somebody, pristine Rocky Mountain spring water. Who knows what they paid for that water in that damn bottle? 
<laughs> I just said, I look in that trash can and I said, hey, it says please recycle. It's got calcium, magnesium, potassium, silica, bicarbonates, chlorides, TDs, TDSs, and pH. Huh. Ah, that feels good to be coming downhill like that. Uh, we're getting close at the bottom now. Hickory's up there behind me, but I, don't, I haven't, haven't been down the pinch in since uh, probably 2016. It was the last time I was here. And, and since then, and since there was the big fire here years ago, and it burned off all the trees, so it was really exposed to the sun. There is more shade on it. Definitely. There's definitely a little bit more cover than I remember. But it's a good walk down, and uh, when you're 64, you feel it. But I feel good. Just uh always a little touch of pain in my right knee just a little bit but you gotta remember to kind of relax the legs sink into it watch all the rocks don't trip over the roots don't fall down have a good time enjoy getting down there get to camp eat something sit back relax look at the river and enjoy hickory boiling coiling up all right mean no harm fella mean no harm Hey, we made it down here to Spooky Camp, and our, our first reaction was a little bit of disappointment because the, the fire pit that used to just be a piece of art now is just a fire pit. Right down by the river. I like this spot a lot. But took us a minute to find it because, you know, things changed. It's probably been 2017 or so since we're here last. Maybe 2016. This part all looks the same, but it had it just had the best fire pit. That's what just made this place nice. And we sort of even rebuilt it last time we were down. And uh, it's a fire pit now. Making a little cold brew tea. Got a kofila bar from Czechoslovakia. Thank you, Milan. And uh, eating some tuna. It's past the expiration date. Hang him a spoon. Looking at Hickory. <laughs> Waiting for his uh, apple cider. And what else? Maple syrup. Oh, daddy! <laughs> <laughs> Got my hammock gear top quilt right here. Got my partial Franken quilt under quilt that I made with my very own hands way back and my war bonnet El Dorado which is basically like the XLC and the Blackbird but it doesn't have the shelf saves a little weight but I like to add my own mesh bag because I'm just kind of a mesh bag guy with my happy smiling looking perplexed mesh bag yeah. preamble Oh, maybe king. I didn't get it. There'll be another one. Man, F-16 or F-18 just went by. Should be another one coming. Woo! Getting ready to have one of these Czechoslovakian drip it coffees that I did wrong the last time, but it was a good coffee. But I'm gonna do it right this time. And that's sitting on my little Zvatze Bene table, which is real nice. Sad thing about these tables is once you carry one, you want it every time, and then I use a little bag that comes in as a little catch-all for all my doodads and whatnots. I'm jealous. I want one, too. Your feet flat right there on the ground, aren't they? they? Are. I'm, I'm ground as best I can. Just don't look at my toenails. <laughs> I'm not zooming in. <laughs> I might not want coffee after that. All right, my drip it is hanging on my my cup. Let me rotate that cup so we can... We ain't on the spear hiking trail. In the Limbo Gorge. And I take note that I did rip the top off this time. I'm doing it correctly. I'm going to pour it properly into the hoe. And let that goodness 
seep on through. See that brown stuff in my pot? That's frog leg juice. <laughs> Let it drip a second. Smells good, man. That's a. Mm hmm. Now, would you just sit back over there and film me pouring it? I feel like you're in my space, man. <laughs> You're hovering over me like some kind of humped Man, over. I'm going to shoot my, tuna, my toenails if you ain't careful. But... You ever do like some kind of humped over galoot? <laughs> hey, look at that boy and poor. I could, all I could smell was baby maw. No. No bite. What's that bug juice called? <laughs> no bite. No bite me. No bite me. Uh, I love when people do bad English on a label. No bite me. And now, I sit and wait. Well, I'm sorry about not filming much, but me and Hickory been down here just talking about old times. Old times. And these are stories. We, we're old timers. We cannot share these stories with y'all. Yeah, <laughs> just a trip through time. And boy, we ain't even begun. But it's dinner time. I'm having the packet gourmet, dotties, chicken and dumplings. Always a good one. Always satisfying. And... What you having, Kent? Oh, he's having the... Same thing. No, you're having Big Easy Gumbo, aren't no, no, you? No, I brought the Dotties. Oh, you're going for Dotties, too? Yep. We're both Dottying up. It's chicken wanna, and dumplings night down here at I Spooky wanna Camp. I'm going to have what you have. I'm going to have what you're having. And then afterwards, I'm going to whoop up uh, Mom's banana pudding. Because I don't want to carry it back up the pension trail in the morning. And we're going to get up early. Early! And, uh... Get up there before the sun starts beating on us. But maybe it'll rain and there is a little bit more shade on it. But we're just going to get it done. And move on to another place in the gorge. Hello there. Um, Hickory's made me get up very early. <laughs> early? In the dark so we can get going up that hill. Get on with the day. And I'm, uh, I'm not going to argue with him. Nice enough to drop my food bag off by me. And I will now slowly come awake with some uh, Medaille d'Oro is it is Brazil. Spotlight on Ken Hex. <laughs> so bright, isn't it? Now it's morning. This morning is uh, oatmeal. And uh, one singular wrapped pop tart flavor, a mystery, and uh, that's it really. And my Dagliadoro instant espresso, which will be fantastic. Heading out from Spooky Camp on the Limber River Trail now. Down here in the Limble Gorges. Because it is gorgeous. Don't ask us where that camp is, we ain't gonna tell you. We'll give you some bad directions. <laughs> Memories of the last time we on pension. Never, ever again. I will not come back, my friend. I say, to say, he say, big hill ahead, there's a lot of dread, cause we're 64, we'll do this trail no more, hey, hey, and my name's Sean, and my name's Ken, and we're the Hickory Brothers, maybe for the last time. <laughs> Breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Uh, maybe a third of the way up now, maybe a little further than that. Hickory and I separated so we could go our own pace. 
I feel pretty good, just strenuous. Cardio, good exercise. Mm -hmm. A little strength, a lot on the quads, the hams, the calves. Oh yeah, the ankles, hip flexors, feel those. I feel alive, I feel really alive. This is me looking alive. Look alive, son. Yes, coach. Hey, whoever left this chair here, that's okay, I got it. You're entitled for somebody else to carry that out for you, so Suge gotcha. Almost to the top. Whew. Picked up that red chair. Why? <laughs> I'll tell you, this last quarter of the trail going up is actually the worst part because you want to see the trailhead so badly yet uh, it's a series of false summits Hickory's way back there we just did a little hooty hoo we always do a little woo and then I wait in a minute I hear a little woo all right to the top of pinch in Took me an hour 38 minutes. I think in 2016, the last time I came up, it was uh, about an hour 15. I was a younger man. And uh, I'm gonna factor in that I'm 64 now and the fact that we went down pinch in yesterday and then came back up it. 2016 when I was here, we had come down the Limble River Trail and then just came up pinch in. So that's what I'll say. And uh, last night I was kind of feeling it in my thighs, in my quads, right before it crawled to the hammock. And uh, night in the hammock kind of healed that. And this morning going up, it's, ah, you know, it's mainly calves, hamstrings, quads. And that last quarter, I, I just felt like I needed a, a high-grade, high-grade fuel. Not regular. Should have had more than two packs of oatmeal and one Pop-Tart. Next time I need uh, some super-duper something to get me up there, but I was just kind of running out of gas, but... Cardio-wise and everything, I felt good, so I feel good about myself. Now let's wait for Hickory to get up. You see, he's got a bigger pack than me. I'm carrying the ohm, and he's carrying the catalyst, and it's full. So uh, I think he has a piece of plywood in there, but don't, don't say anything. You don't want to set him off. <laughs> I didn't notice it, but uh, yesterday we were driving around, and I asked Hickory, I said, man, open up your moonroof. And... Uh, then when we parked, we both had left our windows down and noticed it at the last minute, but we forgot to close the uh, moonroof there. Something got in there and chewed up Hickory's headrest. There's a bunch of foam in my seat. I guess that thing was hungry for naga hide and foam. Oh, that's so sad, Kent. <laughs> All right, so Hickory's chewed headrest here. He's been doing a little, uh, checking it over, doing a little bear CI, uh, CSI. And you can see where the bear's claws came in here and kind of punctured. He must have leaned in that top and couldn't get in and said, I can't get to their food, so I'm just going to, I'm going to violate that driver. They feel violated. <laughs> what do you feel? I feel violated. <laughs> Chewed his headrest off instead. But it does say that on that sign over here. It does give a warning. And uh, key food and scented items hidden in in a locked vehicle. Oh, I'm going to have to hear about this all day long now. <laughs> Damn bear. Oh my god. What do you know? Oh, life's interesting. We're headed out of the Louisville Gorge and we are seeking out barbecue in North Carolina style. We're driving up to um, the little town of, what's it called? Not Newell. Yeah, it is Newell. No. Newland. Newland? Is it Newell? Newland. 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 Yeah, we're going to Newland. 
I want nothing but southern food. Barbecue plate. Mm-hmm. Good hush puppies too. Fried okra. Happy shook. There's old Hickory boot and reboot and boot and reboot. Here's some of Hickory's collection of twine. He never likes twine that matches, but somehow they all work together. We watched the hey, Holly. video. Hey, buddy. Can I get a picture of those pretty eyes? You got such pretty eyes, yeah. See that? Yeah, you're a very good looking. Oh, you know, you're a good looking guy. You're very handsome. Turn your face to the left so we can see that blue eye. Hmm? Let's see that blue eye. Yeah, that's so pretty. Oh, that there is Ollie the dog. Hello, Ollie. That there is Jen the lady human. They, them. I identify as it and am. Woo, buddy. Uh, the pitter-patter of a little bit of rain this morning, which is my final day here. With my good old friend, Hickory. Been my friend for over 50 years. Been a little bit of a hybrid trip. We've camped at the top of the Limbo Gorgeous, over on Keister Memorial Highway. Then we went down and did Pinch In. Last night we camped at the top again because we went out for barbecue and we met a couple of people here. You got to see people when you're down and uh, the best part of this trip has just been hanging with Hickory. And we're going to go out tonight to a place and hang on a ledge I think. And then he's going to drop me at the airport tomorrow. But So this whole trip we had planned got cut short. Me and Hickory. I was going to come down for a longer time. We were going to do a bit more backpacking but... My wife Meg's sister died last week. Her second oldest sister, Mary. God bless her soul. She was a talented woman. So I'm, you know, that's why this trip is, uh, is short, but it's kind of in a little gap where I could come fly down here, hang with Hickory for four days, and then um, when I fly back tomorrow, I get in about midnight up to Minneapolis, St. Paul. I'm back up there in that mini Minneapolis. And then Friday, I've got Friday to regroup and go buy supplies because I'm cooking all the ribs for Mary's memorial on Saturday. Because even though she didn't eat meat, she wanted a pig picking vibe. And she was in the hospital. She had stage 5 kidney disease and a few other maladies. And she was, last days in the hospital, she was kind of out of it a little bit, but she kept going, I want a party, I want to. I want to have a pig roast. I want to be like the old days when everyone would come to the field. So that's what's going on. And now it's, so I just wanted to clue you in. And now I'm just going to finish my medallia d'oro, instant espresso. Wake up. And I think we're going to Louise's Rock House. Going to eat a little liver mush, come back to the gorge. Possibly go down to uh, a place to camp on the east side of the gorge. Well, buddy. Oh, glory, what a morning. I'm sitting here hanging in the hammock, and a car drives up, and Jen brings us up a latte with a double shot of espresso. How kind, and she brought it to me right as I was sitting here in the hammock. And I laid it here on my little table, and I just made my second cup of my Dagliadoro, so I am going to get caffeinated up, man. Hickory and I haven't seen each other since the beginning of the pandemic, so it's just it's just done me good just to hang out with an old friend and on these kind of trips a good part of it is you know we get in the car 
drive around looking for another place to camp go get supplies go look for barbecue go look for ice cream go to the liver mush festival and just driving around listening to the music that we grew up listening to and talking about the past both of us are in a nostalgia trend and uh that's been awesome good times awesome sauce <laughs> hey ollie hello wally how are you wally nothing like being licked in the eye by a dog in your hammock Hey, buddy. Hi. That's my coffee. Short off mountain down there. And there's the Sphinx. And coming up from Marion, the minute we get to our nice campsite, some hammerhead clouds. And we got a we got a thunderstorm coming our way. And we're scared. Scared. We got my little tarp pitched back in the woods so we can uh, sit it out a little bit because there's supposed to be hail. <laughs> comes right up the gorge it's the wall of clouds we were down down that way yesterday Fixing to hit. Wish us luck. about sitting in a storm but I kind of dream about it from time to time and it's mainly on the other side of the gorge so we feel all right we're in a beautiful spot the minute we got here this happened Woo, buddy! Yeah, man. my name's Sean my name's Ken. and we're the Hickory Brothers You 
know there's always a lot of talk about the size of the tarp when you're sitting under my little uh, DIY black crow tarp, which is about probably seven feet across, 11 foot ridge line. And it's raining buckets, and we're staying high and dry. And there's been some wind, you know, it's, there's mist. Here's our little walk into camp. Come right out. Come right out to this lovely view. Hawksbill Mountain back there behind me. Looking to the west side of the gorge, down towards Short Off. Then you come right over here. back up Slicky Rock. Got a lot of stuff just drying out because it got misty. And we're cook it right up in here. Four Bonnet El Dorado. More a clipper, water bottle, svatze bene, little table, catch all that goes with this. ULA Ohm. And then Hickory's World. I think he's got a he's got a war bonnet superfly and a Moz Gear hammock. ULA Catalyst Backpack. There you go, that's our little tier. I'm using Dutch Clip, Tree Hugger, Toggle, Marlin Spike Knot, Whoopie Sling, Dutch Beaner, Black Bishop Bag, made out of old green bean. My DIY black crow tarp that kept us dry through the deluge. Making myself a little, not exactly iced tea, but a cold tea. Not quite a sun tea. That will refresh. And give me some caffeine. Through the woods and by the river And along that railroad line And along that railroad
Mambo gorgeous. Mambo gorgeous. Bevelking.com You know we'd have to come down there and get you. A beer can. Or... Is that a new collar? Yes. More friends have shown. <laughs> cool days and gin. Yeah! Hickory, the gang's all here. <laughs> <laughs> so I can have my Medagliadoro Instant Espresso. And for that one woman out there, Medagliadoro Instant Espresso. Point. Can I can I ask you guys a question? Why you like doing this? Do you just like working? The people. The people you meet. I like people and the community. 
that's the best part. And you, you do go you camping sometimes, right? It's not all work. You do go out there and camp, right? It takes a lot of work to make it fun for other people. I don't have a lot of time for camping, but I get to spend some time out here. Tell you a secret about trail volunteers. It's about the most selfish thing you'll ever do because it's so rewarding. Right. And, and it, it's an interaction with, uh, with the land that you don't get otherwise. You, know, you learn... Uh, especially when we're in, working in the wilderness area and trying to make it look natural, you have to know what natural is in order to make it look natural. Well, Something's wrong, and and then you know that process. You're so engaged with right. the woods that way. T tell us your name again. I'm Kevin. Kevin Massey. And I'm Wild South. And this is I'm Davy McGlynn. Davy McGlynn. <laughs> I grew up in these mountains, and I'm just glad to give back and be in the national forest and dig up some trails and that happened. Yeah. Yeah, I've done that. Oh, I gotta get a picture of this. Oh wow. I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna stand up. Yeah, I'm gonna get away from the car. <laughs> uh, I'll send the little thing right there. Tell me what you took you. <laughs> Any minute now, oh, adjusting on, my man. focus. <laughs> You're good. I'm just a trail worker to no, distract your neck. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It starts to blend in with everything. So, kids, this is what you're not doing. That's Pulaski right, safety. Scale. This is what you do not do with a Pulaski. <laughs> what do you call this tool right here? Super uh, hoe. Uh, uh, Extreme hoeing. The company that makes it is Rogue Ho. Rogue And uh, it's kind of like putting that, you know, now we just call them Rogue Ho. Hello. Hey, they got your tools laid out for you there. Let's go. They feel beautiful. Thanks for doing that. If you had a choice. <laughs> headed out onto the we've uh, we've headed on out of the Limpel Gorge for a little bit and seek and. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Kia. If I want to buy a five thing, well. Shit. <laughs> uh, let's pop this membrane off, make a little cut, grab that skin, and peel that off the rib. Or I should say ribs, because there's more than one. <clears throat> and if there's a little bit left, you can just grab that. And then that is gone, and that rack is ready. And I will do that 16 times. I think Tom. What's he getting? Bing. <laughs> Bing. Oh, you're so shy. Could you give us a smile? Here's what I do to my ribs. Whoops, wrong mustard. I just take some straight up French's mustard, because it cooks town kind of vinegary. Squirt it on. I'll rub that in. Cover those edges. Get that mustard all over there. And I put it on this side as well. Get the nice mustard hand. Mustard man. Mustard man with the yellow hand. Mustard man. I get that all rubbed up. And then I take brown sugar. I'm going to do with the brown sugar as I rub it on and all of these uh, racks have been rubbed down first with some Bad Byron's butt rub. Get that brown sugar on there and that's the way I like to do my ribs. And then they're cooked in my cooker. They're not really over open flame because there's an angle iron dispersing the heat. Cook them low and slow. The sugar doesn't burn. It caramelizes a bit. That's what I do right there. And that'll be good eating. And Bean likes to hang around my feet while I'm doing that, don't you, Bean Bum? Woo, barbecue! Yeah, it 
This is my sister-in-law, Mary, who uh, we're having her memorial. Passed away about a week and a half ago. She was a musician and artist. And this is a lot of her art, just a few select pieces of her musical compositions. And that's one of my nieces, Anya, and one of our friends, Sally Steger, who goes by Mayor Lennon, doing their little sound check. And that's Zaya back playing the keyboard. They'll be playing during the memorial. It's, all, it's an all-family event. This is my third cousin once removed, Lucia. That's my second cousin once removed, Mariah. And this, this is Mary, ex, my wife Meg's sister, who we're celebrating today. This is a famous, or I should say infamous, band that Mary was in called Cassidy and being married to Meg. All I've ever heard is about is Cassidy and the farm. And That's my niece, uh, Zaya. That's my nephew, George. He's, uh, he's the videographer, but right now I'm taking his job. That's my nephew Oliver up there. He's the potter. His curse is he'll forever have to make everybody pottery plates. We have the blessing and the curse in this family. Like if you throw a skill out and show it in this family, you will forever. It's a blessing to have it, but it's a curse because they'll call on you a blessing. into perpetuity. Of course. It's like Zaya over there. She sings. So from now on, she'll have to sing forever. Ever and ever. Stuff. Ever and ever. Yep. But hey, uh, tell us your TikTok thing. What's my TikTok? Yeah, tell him. Yeah. Uh, Oliver the Potter. Oliver the Potter. I make. Potter it's a lovely videos. play. Lots of high schools do Indeed. it. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Check out his site. He's a he's a gifted potter, and as a kid, we didn't know what he was gonna do. I finally, <laughs> finally found Much some. love. With my wife Mac right here, and we're having the celebration for Mary. The invisible Anya is back on camera, and that's my niece Willow, who's my sister Patty's daughter from Alaska. That's right. Okay. All right. Celebration is filling up. Now there's going to be a whole memorial service first for an hour. And then 5 o'clock, I'm supposed to have these ribs ready. So the pressure's on, man. My brother in law, Dan. It's my brother in law, Kevin. That's the neighbor, Janet. Thank you to this big, crazy, beautiful family for making us. And I, I love you guys. I love you, I love you, Mary. I love you, 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 I got eaten. Nobody came up and complained. We're now doing bean sandwiches. And then Dan did, I think they're called Wonder Burgers, they're veggie burgers. They all got gone. Everybody tore it up. There's tons of great desserts left though. So Mary, here's to you. You're a great sister-in-law, super talented, and I probably learned more about you today than I really ever knew. So this is from my sister-in-law, my wife's sister Meg's, sister Mary. This is her memorial. If only I could have something like this. But I think only four people are going to come. That's good enough for me. <laughs>